Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're live here at Silicon Angles, the Cube's coverage of Hadoop World 2012, the Strata Conference. We've, they've merged those two together, O'Reilly Media and, and Cloudera have came to a partnership, and we're here. This is our third year having the Cube at Hadoop World. Um, the conference is expanding. Our first year was 800 on top of the previous year, which was 500, and it went to 1400. It's up closer to 3000 now. I think the official number is 2500. And we're here, we're covering all the action. This is theCUBE where we try to extract the signal from the noise, bring you the smartest guests that we can find. And we're here with a very interesting company called Rainstore. The CEO is John Bantelman. And uh, John, welcome to theCUBE. Pleasure, thank Great you. Great to see you, it's been a while since we, uh, since we talked. We were just talking uh, off camera. We, I think, met in California a while back, right? In or was Boston, it Boston? Boston. It was one of the first uh, uh, BD events that, uh, that Greg Duplessis ran. So you guys have come a long way since then. We've come yeah. a long way. So. Uh, why don't you give us the update? I'm here with my co uh, my co-host Jeff Kelly, but give us the update on Rainstore. Oh well, well probably our most recent news is we raised um, 12 million dollars in the last couple of weeks, so we just went through a big fundraising. Interestingly, our investors are um, basically a major bank and a major telco, and that represents our market. So we deliver big data solutions to the enterprise, um, and what's interesting is we're deployed in companies that deal with carrier class products, i.e. products that can't break. So for our software to go into production in organizations like um, you know, the biggest telco in North America, one of the biggest banks on Wall Street, it means that we're delivering a very robust and capable solution to big data. I, um, I noticed on your website you have a blog called Hadoop the Tape Killer. Somebody, we were at uh, IBM's IOD conference this week and somebody called Hadoop the New Tape. <laughs> Yeah, well, so well, 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 actually, <laughs> think it, I, I, I think it's a really interesting issue. I mean, so we're dealing with a, a client today. They have a very large, complex data warehousing infrastructure. It's 500 terabytes. Um, the price is in the tens and tens of millions of dollars. And they have two to three petabytes on tape. Wow. And for them to manage and get access to their history, they need a much more capable and economic, scalable solution. And I think there's an interesting proposition where companies are being forced to take very large amounts of valuable production data, data and basically kill it, because tape kills information, it kills information. Well, once it's access. there, you're never going to go get it, right? Well, two petabytes on tape recovery is not viable, right? <laughs> <laughs> they say backup is one thing, recovery is everything. But so, you know, it's interesting, John, I'd say four or five years ago, if you said you were in the database world, people would say, oh yeah, that's nice, and they'd, you know, they'd move on to somebody else at the cocktail party. Database has become one of the hottest topics going. It's like a renaissance. Um, wh what's going on there, and where do you guys fit? Well, well I think um, big data has just completely changed databases. The databases are well established, uh, most of the technology, relational technology, is you know, more than 40 years old. And the requirements to scale, the requirements to move from millions of records a day to tens or hundreds of billions of records a day, moving from tens of terabytes to petabytes, every dimension of data has changed. And new innovation is absolutely required to meet customer requirements. So talk about that innovation, uh, generally and specifically uh, Rainstore innovation, we can get uh, into it a little bit. Yeah, well, well, so, so the core innovation around um, most platforms is scalability. So if you think about Hadoop, Hadoop is about distributed scale out. And generally, even though Hadoop gets a lot of press, Hadoop is generally about brute force. If you have a big enough data problem and if you can throw enough machines at it, you can solve the issue. Mm -hmm. What Rainstore brings is some I don't know, intelligence and efficiency to that. So the first part that we bring is the ability to store data in a very unique and very efficient form. And our data reduction is you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 X. So that means that we're saving, we're reducing the data 90 to 99%. So if you take a petabyte of data, you put it in Rainstore, and you're physically taking 35 terabytes of disk, you've changed the problem. Mm -hmm. You've fundamentally changed the problem. You've made it much easier, much more manageable. And, and it cuts the cost, obviously. And, we, and we've cut the cost, and then 
most people then believe because you're storing the data efficiently, it's going to be slow to access. I was going to ask you, is what's no the performance impact? It's, it's, I, would, I would think, to me, intuitively, it would speed it up. It speeds it up. Yeah. I mean, have you seen that consistently in your customer base? We, we see that consistently. So we can run um, both MapReduce and full SQL, full and, full and C SQL. So you can connect with your Tableau tool, you can connect with business objects, you can run an Oracle SQL statement that's a meter long. Mm -hmm. Again, sorry, install and it works. You can also, if you want to get at your data differently, you can use MapReduce and Pig, and you can do more complex mm -hmm. kind of multi-structured analytics on information. So Rainstorm gives you both dimension, both accesses of dimension, but we're very smart at how we read the information. Yeah, so uh, you're seeing this as a major trend here at this event and, and others, is sort of unification, bringing together SQL and the NoSQL world. You saw Adapt won the startup award, uh, Cloudera announced Impala, Impala. we've seen Hortonworks announced, uh, you see that, uh, Hortonworks announced, mm -hmm. Jeff, uh, with mm -hmm. Microsoft, and, and there are others, uh, MapR announced uh, M7, so you're seeing this trend. What do you make of that, and where do you see, it's go where, where do you see it going, and where does Rainstore fit? So, so I think there are, um, you know, this is where we have lived for the last five years, right? Mm. It's about dealing with big data in the enterprise. And I think Hadoop is suddenly trying to bridge between the wild west of Silicon Valley, where startups are willing to rewrite everything in Java, to trying to <laughs> distribute the software into banks and telcos and the broader enterprise. And the, the skills, knowledge, and tools there exist. So if you're going to sell to an enterprise the robustness and the ability to leverage those existing tools and techniques are key. So you've got to do something on top of SQL. You can't do something instead of SQL. Rainstore mm -hmm. delivers that and has been delivering it for years. And other companies have announced products that aren't working yet. And we'll see whether they work. <laughs> so, uh, you know, another, you know, <laughs> another You want to name names there, John? No. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Jeff? Ah, uh, well. <laughs> So, so I wanted to ask you about how you're helping customers kind of make a transition from that old world of data management, uh, you know, just where just, you just kind of got your relational database, you've got the very, very structured, rigid uh, data models, to this kind of new world, you've got platforms like Hadoop and, the, and uh, what Rainstore does, allowing you to do both MapReduce and SQL uh, in the same uh, environment, but still there's, there's got to be a transition period, and how are you helping your customers um, deal with kind of that legacy legacy technology and make the transition, uh, you know, by m you got to minimize the risks and, you know, maximize your return on the on the new technologies like Rainstore and Hadoop and other things? Well, so Rainstore runs across a, a variety of scale-out platforms, so mm -hmm. Hadoop is one, but you could equally run us on a, a cloud storage platform mm -hmm. with, with a scalable set of virtual machines. We have deployments which run on scale out NAS and a bunch of um, kind of Red Hat Linux servers. So we operate across any low cost scalable architecture. And what we're finding in the in industry is there are some people who love a do, mm. and there are some people who don't. <laughs> so, so sometimes in the same organization. And some. <laughs> you know, well, I think the most the most important thing is to understand big data is a problem definition. Mm -hmm. So depending on the organization, so sometimes we're going to an organization. And their issue is like the data warehousing example, the data's structured. Mm -hmm. It's already sitting in a data warehouse. The problem is scalability and efficiency. Mm -hmm. So we can directly take information, we can understand the DDL, we can take their existing SQL, we can plug it in, they're not changing a line of, co line of code and it works. Mm -hmm. That transition is allowing them to move to massive scale, very low cost. We have other examples that we're dealing with where we have one partner, for example, who's dealing with Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. The requirements are two million records a second. <laughs> and querying across, you know, 10 trillion records in a few seconds. So Rainstore can manage and deliver mm. massive scale, and it gives the flexibility to the customer to decide. So as opposed to, we are very focused on working with standards. Mm -hmm. So PIG is a standard, we'll support PIG, we'll support it directly, you don't change your line of code. SQL's a standard, we support mm -hmm. SQL. Talk a little bit more about your secret sauce. You, you talked earlier about your, um, your data reduction. Um, are you doing deduplication, compression, a combination of those? Uh, it, it's, a, it, it's a combination, but the core capability is most 
databases, most traditional databases, store rows. Yeah. So if you've got a trillion records, you've got a trillion rows, and then you have to put two indexes on top, so you, you kind of have two trillion rows of data that you're trying to manage. Rainstore stores patterns. So if you give us a, a set of records, we will store the unique values and patterns of values that make up that data. We do it purely algorithmically. So we are at a very gradual level to duplicating the information. We're also doing it very quickly because we can ingest at millions of records a second. Mm -hmm. So we store everything without repeating anything. And we do it completely scalably. So, so we'll it's not a batch we'll job that you're going back, no, obviously. No, no. So, so <laughs> as, as records are streaming in, yeah, of course. we'll take a group of records, dedupe them, and we store a file. Yep. That gives us a huge advantage over a conventional database because essentially, the resulting data set, if it's 30 times smaller, the I.O. The pipe mm -hmm. appears to be 30 times bigger. So most databases, even Hadoop, get clogged trying to get information in. Mm -hmm. Rainstore is almost always CPU bound because we're making the data so small and we're able to read it without having to reinflate it. Well, we can move data around at a pace 20 or 30 times faster than most conventional databases. So that's, so as we described before, the way in which we store information drives performance. And you're, you talked about some of your larger customers before, you mentioned Telco and some others. Talk about how they're using your, your product specifically. Well, so so I, um, in Telcos, one of the common use cases is that I want to capture every network event. Mm -hmm. So everything that's happening in my network, every drop call, every call tried, mm -hmm. every time s somebody phases out because they move between antennas, I want to understand my network behavior. Typically those are you know, tens of billions of events per day. You know, as we move to 4G and LTE, they'll become hundreds of billions of events per day. <coughs> that raw data is actually telling the carrier or the ISP what's happening. Who's doing what? How the information, uh, uh, how the call is, uh, how their bandwidth is being consumed, how many people are going to video. So that's a key requirement. If you're going to manage customer experience, you've got to understand the usage of the phone. The data is phenomenal. The data is just amazing. And the ability then to both capture that at speed and analyze it at pace is a key requirement. In banks, the biggest um, requirement for us is how do you deal with you know, 40% data, data growth on a reducing IT budget when you have ever increasing requirements to keep information around forever to meet regulatory requirements. Mm -hmm. so, so, so this whole, uh, you know, if you, are, if you have a 100 petabyte data estate growing by 40% per year, and the goal in most Wall Street banks is to reduce budget, you've got to drive efficiency. And the experience that we have in those markets is literally we're making a, a 10x cost difference. We're literally moving the cost of that data management by a decimal point. Mm -hmm. wow. So it's a business driven, well, that's an interesting commercially driven. Exactly, it's got to be business driven. It's got to be business so driven. So talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, we were at uh, uh, the I IBM IOD conference a couple, of, uh, well, yesterday and feels like a few days ago, Dave, yeah. but uh, weeks ago, yesterday <laughs> and the day before. And uh, somebody mentioned that you know, if you if you treat big data as a science project, you're going to fail. You need to you need to have a business problem you're trying to solve, a discrete business problem, and 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 attack it from from the business problem down rather than the technology up. Um, do you agree with that sentiment? And and if so, or if not, how how do you work with your customers to <coughs> to, to best leverage your technology, especially new and new customers who are kind of maybe new to the quote unquote big data? We, we, we literally look for customers that have, uh, so big data is often described as a technology stack. Mm -hmm. To me, big data is a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So if you've got to ingest a million records a second, that's a problem, mm -hmm. right? If you've got to store a petabyte of data and it's going to grow by 40 or 50% per year, that's a problem. So we focus on customers, we identify where their data management issues are, mm -hmm. and that's how we, um, uh, you know, we, we, we very much have taken a, an industry-focused solutions route to market, mm -hmm. right? So if you're dealing with 
compliance and trading, credit card analysis, mm. smart grid data. So while there's examples. commonalities, there's you've got to focus specifically on the business issue yeah. to come to the vertical and to into the specific company. Uh, yes, yeah, so as, as opposed to saying, go play with my software and what's interesting. We're talking to customers about solving focused and discrete yeah. business requirements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are you guys talking about at the, uh, the event here? What's, uh, what's going on? What's the conversation like? What are you, what are you telling prospects and customers? Uh, I think a, a lot of our conversations are focused upon addressing enterprise scale requirements around big data. It's that simple. It's that simple. And so what are those requirements? What are people telling you? We need it to be cost effective. We've, we've checked that box. Yeah, we need to be cost right. effective. Reliability. Well, we, we need to operate with standards. I mean, I mean, as you get into larger scale organizations, telcos and banks, I mean, I need to have, you know, multiple end copies of my information. I've got to be able to do that scalably and effectively. I've got to replicate data across a wide area network in order to address um, you know, data security issues. So, so, so there, are, there are a large set of requirements which are really driven around enterprise needs and that's where Rainstore, we believe, brings something to the big data party. Excellent. Um, my last question, John, is so we're here, this is like I say, our third year at Hadoop World. It started out as a lot of tire kickers, a lot of sandbox activity. It's evolving, you get companies like yours now talking about solving real business problems. Where do you see this going? Is, is the traditional world of analytics and big data, where, or let's call them data warehouses, is that going to give way to this world of Hadoop? Right now you guys sort of got the Hadoop tail wagging the dog. Do you see that equation flipping? Uh, do you see those two worlds coming together? What's your vision for the future? I, I, I think the dynamics of this industry are changing completely. So two years ago, probably 10% of the people who we were speaking to were interested in the deep. Today, 80% of the POCs we're running are on Hadoop. Mm. So, so, so I mean, if you look at that in terms of, n now, I wouldn't say 80% of the deployments are on Hadoop. Right. Many people will test out the product on Hadoop and say, well, I'm going to start off more conservatively. I'm going to run this on the NAS box. But Hadoop is absolutely the center of the conversation. Um, I, think, I think Hadoop will challenge um, the data warehousing technologies. I mean, I think there's a, at the scale that data is now being managed, paying you know, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a terabyte, when you're thinking petabytes, is hard. So and, I, and, and I think the technologies that we have, the technologies which are coming out of Cloudera with Impala, although still early, people are going to say, you know, do I really need to have two platforms and shuffle the information from my very expansive very scalable Hadoop cluster into this very expensive appliance because I want to query it and the answer will be, the answer is probably not. You well, know, Hadoop will do more and more and more and more of what the business requires. Well, we were at Oracle Open World a couple of weeks ago, Larry Ellison's keynote, he said, big data, meet big iron. And the implication was you're going to have you know, a million and a half dollar infrastructure to succeed in, in big data. The world that you're describing is different. <laughs> I don't, but, but uh, it's not the world I live in. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're, we are able to deal with, you know, if I can compress my data and run a petabyte of infrastructure on 20 nodes, mm -hmm. 30 nodes, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's I really think. interesting. And those nodes cost me 5K. It's really interesting. Yeah, I think Larry's, yeah, that's Larry's world, and I think... Uh, uh, Larry bought Sonny, he's got, he's got to find somebody who's <coughs> going to buy it, right? <laughs> that's well, true. Well, he <laughs> could buy his way into the big data world, we'll but uh, hopefully the innovation will continue uh, without him for a while. Um, and, uh, I, think, I think, as you say, this is the most innovative time in data management. Yeah, no doubt. We, we believe we are part of that, but obviously um, there's a whole host of other companies who are coming up with brilliant ideas and great new products. There's so much the opportunity, yeah. though, right? And, and I mean the industry is going to be transformed. Yeah, Absolutely. excellent. 
Well, uh, uh, thank you very much, John, for coming on. Rainstore, keep an eye on these guys. Uh, just raised a big round. Congratulations on that. And congratulations on all your success, and good luck. We'll be watching. Cheers, man. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. All right, thank keep it right there. We'll be, we'll be back with our next guest live from Strata and Hadoop World. This is theCUBE, and I'm Dave Vellante. Keep it right there. I appreciate that, Mike.